morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be with you again. We do hope you had a Merry Christmas and wish you all the best for a Happy New Year in 2021. We welcome everyone back to church with this virtual worship service on this first Sunday of the new year. Now that the new year is here, many of us are looking to our new opportunities to hear God speak to us, so we come to this worship ready to learn about the light which will bring life, hope, and peace to our world. We hope you enjoyed and were inspired by our special Advent service. Our pastoral charge would like to thank everyone who helped with the production of the Advent and Christmas Eve services. The online service would not be possible without their participation, as well as your dedication to listening to these services. During this worship, we will be sharing in communion, <clears throat> so feel free to, at this time, to pause your computer and take a few moments to get the bread and wine or juice ready. Now that the Christmas festivities are over, <clears throat> many will forget the need that is still ongoing in our community. Now more than ever, there are many organizations <clears throat> in need of donations. The Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507, the Ottawa Mission, and your local food banks are just a few that need your generosity during these difficult times. Please keep them in mind. <clears throat> If you would like to donate to our church, you can do so online by e-transfer to muchurch at belnet.ca. You can also send checks directly to Maryville or Fallowfield Church. And of course, you can find the addresses online, www.maryvillefallowfield.org. Once again, we wish you a healthy and happy new year. We hope that you will enjoy and be inspired by this worship service that is all about the light of the world. In this season of light, we gaze upon this candle to remind us of God's light shining in the world today. O luminous one, outshining lamp, stars, and sun, break forth and be with us today and forevermore. And may we carry your light of hope and justice to the world. Amen.
Let us join our hearts together for our opening prayer. O God, we come to worship this morning knowing we are still in the 12 days of Christmas as we celebrate Epiphany just a few days early. We come proclaiming the good news that a Savior has been born, sent to nurture and transform us. We come on this first Sunday in the new year ready to worship the light of the world, sent to guide us forward as we work to build his kingdom come on earth. In the year gone by, in the year to come, and right at this moment, you are with us, Holy One. You are with us, calling us to be a community grounded in love and commissioned to live out that love in your world. Help us, O oh God, to be compassionate people, open to your amazing creation and ready to help those who need us most. You have called us today to listen to the wise men from the East, and they call us to journey into the unknown, trusting you as we head into unfamiliar places. Help us to be courageous as we open our lives to new opportunities that lie ahead, not only for us as individuals, but for the church as well. We still yearn to be together in person, and so we pray that your spirit will be with us as we continue with our virtual services. We give thanks to you for the deep commitment made by so many to keep your church alive during these difficult times. And we raise these prayers to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. As part of our Christmas and Epiphany celebration, please join me as we say a Christmas creed from Latin America. I believe in Jesus Christ and in the power of the gospel, which began in Bethlehem. I believe in the one whose spirit glorified a small village of whose coming the shepherds saw the sign and for whom there was not room at the inn. I believe in the one whose life changed the course of history, for whom the kings of the earth had no power and who was not understood by the proud. I believe in the one to whom the poor, the oppressed, the discouraged, the afflicted, the sick, the blind, the leprous gave welcome and accepted as Lord and Savior. I believe in the one who with love changed the hearts of the proud and with his life showed that it is more important to serve than to be served and that the greatest glory is giving your life for others. I believe in peace, which is not the absence of war, but justice among all people and nations and love among all. I believe in reconciliation, forgiveness, and the transforming power of the gospel. I believe that Christmas is strength and power, and that this world can change if with humility and with faith we kneel before the manger. I believe that I must be the first one to do so. Amen.
Today we know that even if we are not together in body, we are connected through our hearts and through the love and the spirit of our God. Once again, we will do a virtual communion. And so I ask that you follow along what Mimi has put up and join in where indicated. Let us begin. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, may you find love here because all are welcome at this table. From that Bethlehem beginning, Jesus spent his life serving others that all might know the compassionate care of a loving God. And today Jesus serves us yet again as we come ready to worship and remember his life. At this table, God brings wholeness out of brokenness and healing to our world. Blessed are you, O God, who brought light and life to our world and who continues to bring us love everlasting. God of this new year, you have sent Jesus to bring good news for all people and we are blessed by this news. We are hungry for your love and we pray that this sacred meal will feed our souls, nourish our hearts, and transform our minds. As we enter this new year promising to live the love of Jesus, we remember the life he lived. We remember how he broke down all barriers to show the world what real love looks like. Today, we are grateful to be part of this holy meal, the one he shared with his closest disciples. In our gratitude, we remember Jesus' birth, baptism, life, death, and resurrection. We remember how he shared his love with all people, and so we say yes to his coming reign of peace, love, and justice. And in our remembering, we declare the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, and Christ is risen. Christ comes again and again. Holy God, you poured your spirit on all who traveled to Bethlehem. Pour out your spirit upon us now as we share this sacred meal. May we know your presence and may our hearts be open to new possibilities. May we be encouraged by the teachings of Jesus as we work to build his kingdom come on earth. These, we know, are the gifts of God for everyone. Today, we remember how he took the bread, blessed it and broke it, and then shared it with his friends, saying, Take and eat. This bread is the body of life broken for the world. Eat it in remembrance of the love I shared with this world. After that, he took the cup, poured it, blessed it, and passed it to each of them, saying, This cup is the sign of the new covenant. Whenever you drink it, remember my compassion for all people. Let us pray together. God of the new year, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you repeatedly reveal yourself to us. In the sharing of this meal, we are reminded that the light of your love is for all of creation. Lead us to live lives marked by the teachings of Jesus. May we go into the world in the spirit of compassion, and may we be ready to speak your love. Amen.
This reading is from Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Epha, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading is from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. The Visit of the Wise Men In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them 
went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thanks be to God. Praise be to Christ.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God. Amen. If 2020 has taught us anything, it is that the healing and meaningful changes we need for a healthy world require courage, as well as collaboration, trust, and the ability to sustain ourselves over the long haul. Our Christmas story teaches us the same thing. All the characters in our story reflect people who collaborate, trust, and sustain each other in trying times. Today we are celebrating Epiphany, which falls on this coming Wednesday, and it will be the 12th day of Christmas commemorating when the Magi, wise ones or astrologers, whichever you prefer, observed the star and came in search of the child to worship him. Now, we don't know a whole lot about the Magi, other than they came from the East, and their arrival and inquiries around Jerusalem were so spiritually and politically threatening that Herod got frightened, and he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the city to interrogate them about the birthplace of Jesus. Herod tried desperately to discover the exact location of the child by insisting the Magi find out and then inform him where the little one was. But Herod didn't succeed. He was not able to extinguish the light that had come into the world. I'm convinced that as the Magi traveled to the birthplace of Jesus, they collaborated with the shepherds, the angels, innkeepers along the route, common folk as well as Mary and Joseph, to keep the birthplace secret. They trusted in God and each other to sustain them over the long haul. And because of this, they were able to perceive the message that God was delivering. And the message is that we are called to wake up, to have an epiphany and appreciate the world God has created. We are called to respond with gratitude and awe for the beauty and diversity of all creation. We are called to recognize and reflect on our interdependence with the whole web of life. I know that I have given many reflections on humanity being interconnected and interdependent. And the interconnection and interdependence of humanity is a lovely sentiment. But I don't think I ever really, really, truly got it until this Christmas. As I have mentioned before, my mother has Alzheimer's and is in a long-term care home in Quebec. And we are once again not allowed in to see her. And the home she is in is boarded up like Fort Knox and nobody's getting past their gates. And I believe that is why they've stayed COVID-free and I am very, very grateful for that. That being said, I wanted to make sure she had presents to open on Christmas Day. So I took a trip down with my best friend to deliver them. Now, my mother, who sometimes doesn't recognize me, always does when I am with this friend. And we have been friends for over 55 years now, and at one point, this friend even lived with us when we were teenagers. And I wonder if that's why my mother recognizes us. So on this day, we were to drop the presents off at the administration desk and then just leave. But the secretary asked me if we wanted my mother's health care worker to bring her to the large window in their sitting room so I could see her. And of course, I said yes. My friend and I left the administration desk and went outside and up to the large window. And when my mother started to come close, she did indeed recognize us and broke out in a big smile. And as she came closer to the window and put her hand on the glass, the healthcare worker who was with my mother began to cry. And it was at that moment I got it. I had a real epiphany. I understood how interconnected we all are and that I need to trust and have faith in the compassion of this stranger to take care of my mother when I am not able to. I now get how dependent I am on the kindness of others to make this world a good place, a good place where we all live out the commandment of Jesus to love one another. I also realized at that moment just how blessed I am to have my friend in my life, willing for the past 18 months to make the regular four-hour trip with me 
just so my mother will continue to recognize me. You know what? It was all strangers and friends who came together in our Christmas story. The shepherds, the innkeepers, the magi, Elizabeth, Zachariah, Mary, Joseph, they all pulled together so the light and love of God could not be extinguished. And because of their courage and collaboration and trust in each other, light came out of darkness. And because of the courage and collaboration of most people during this pandemic, we can trust in God and in each other and have faith that God will give us the ability to sustain ourselves over the long haul. Our story, our Christmas story, is a great one. It is one that connects our souls with each other and with the whole universe of creation. Thanks be to God for strangers and friends to bless you in this new year. Amen. One, we have joined our hearts together on this first Sunday in the new year, ready to answer the call to be your people. Today, we have learned from your word, been refreshed through music, and felt the presence of your spirit connecting us to each other in some mysterious way through this virtual service. Today, with the Magi, we realize that you have gifted us, the church, through the goodness of your grace. And this gift, this blessing, calls us to be your hands and to do your work in the world, to be your voice and share your comforting words to those in need of compassion, and to bring healing to a world that never gives up hope. You have gifted us, your people, with the power of your Holy Spirit that transforms lives and makes all things new. And so we listen when you call us to follow the teachings of Jesus in mending broken lives and seeing them made whole. Today, on this first Sunday in the new year, we pray for the healing of our world from COVID-19. We pray for the sick and infected, for our vulnerable populations, for our local, provincial, and federal governments as they work towards combating this pandemic. And we give thanks and pray for our scientific community, for medical professionals, and all healthcare workers. We pray for those with health challenges who feel isolated, anxious, and helpless. We pray for the homeless, unable to practice the protocols of social distancing, and for workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship. And we pray for families with young children at home for the foreseeable future. We pray for their teachers. O oh God of love, we offer these prayers to you in a moment of silence.
O oh God, as we commit to your work, may we feel the presence of our Savior walking beside us. And may we know the power of your love in both our actions and our words. And today on this Epiphany Sunday, we pray that you, Holy One, will be our daily star, guiding our lives and building your kingdom of love. And may we, like the Magi, the shepherds, the angels, Mary and Joseph, as well as all of the prophets, follow your light of truth in all that we do. Amen. Go now as a light to all people. Honor the Holy One. Share with others what you know about the teachings of Jesus. And may God strengthen you and bless you. May Jesus bring forth justice for you and among you. And may the Holy Spirit work within you and affirm you as God's beloved ones. Go from this worship in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.